Hey, everybody. We are with Michael. How do you say your last name again? It's tough. Melisinos. Melisinos. Well, 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 hold on. It depends where you are in the world. If, uh, you know, here in the States, Melisinos is what we would say. If you're in Greece, they say Melisinos or Melisinos, you know, de depending on how, you know, uh, you know, how they uh, uh, accent the the name. But nice. one of those three is fine. Nice. <laughs> you <know>? Nice. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so uh, Michael, we talked trend following for many, many years. Uh, he's been a trend following trader. He has a fund. He also works with Jerry Parker pretty closely. Uh, you guys have been very interesting in uh, trend following stuff lately. So I figured I'd bring Michael on. It's been a little bit since he's been on the show. So how are you doing today, Michael? Oh, good. You know, life is a new, uh, well, not say a new dad. You know, my son's 17 months old now. And, um, you know, so we're, it, it, it's just tough though. Even when you have help, you're still tired, mm. man. You still got like stuff to do all the time. Then you're like trying to, trying to fit in everything else into it too. And is it you your know. first kid? Yeah. First. Yeah. Um, uh, it'll slow I, down. I, th I think it's going to be only, um, but yeah, it'll slow. Yeah. You know, he's getting, he's fun now, but like that first year is tough, man. That's oh, it's very tough. tough, man. Uh, you know, it's, it's probably the hardest thing in life actually, really like you're tired all the time. It's a lot of infighting. Like it's a lot of mess. Like I would just get, I, it would just be like so much stress of being like, wait, am I actually mad or am I just tired? Like, <laughs> like that's, yeah. that's how you feel yeah. sometimes. So yeah. totally get it. We're finding our new system, you know, like how we, how we divvy up things and you know always time you know we're, we're just it's all logistic a lot of logistical talks before it was like where are we going for dinner where are we going uh yep. for brunch on the weekend where, where's our next trip and now mm -hmm. it's like uh he's got class he's got his play he's got this like mm -hmm. did, did you pick up the package it's like you know it's all this very like uh you gotta back test remember? it <laughs> you get blindsided with work and you're like ah oh, you know and then yeah. you're tired all the time so you know but yeah you know it's fun uh he's getting fun now he's becoming more of like a, a human now yeah you know, obviously it, the walking and talking and he can um you know he interacts a lot it's not like yeah that first year is just like magoo you know nice. you just got to do everything i but, love uh, it it's yeah. it's you're at, you know now to the point where the kids for me are grown up and they're out doing their own thing and it's just so cool to kind of see the the change and the difference but it those times were the rough times how, it only how gets old better. are your kids uh 13, kids? 13 and 18 13 to 18 mm -hmm. man 13 wait how old are you i am 38 whoa mm -hmm. wow you went early man 13 and 18, yeah. Wow, you went early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was different person. I, mean, I was 30, 37 when when we had uh, when we had Preston. So yeah, you know, we took our sweet ass time, you know, traveling and uh, enjoying our silence. Nice. <laughs> Before yeah. we went on that path, but wow. I get it. I mean, it's not like we're kind of back to that point now, you know, like I'm kind of back to that point now, which is nice. Uh, but at the same time, it's like teenage, teen, teenage years is always a new thing. There's always something new, you know, like I pretty yeah. much think that the glory time is the uh, seven to uh, 12 probably. And then after that, you're like back into the teenage angsty teen years. And I was a fucking miserable teenager. So I would assume mm. they'd be one that that makes sense. <laughs> right yeah you know it's just like new skills for you know like it's just something new all the time you always got to be ready and uh you know once you get used to the to the old phase and the new one starts and mm -hmm. yeah you know, we'll get used to his toddler and then school will start and there'll be new dynamics and these yep. crazy teachers and like you know politics and other parents that are yep. you know wacky and who knows he gets pushed down at school and you're know, like how am i supposed to deal with this mm -hmm. you know like you know but they only get better over time it's like trend following yeah. yeah 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 you get a lot of uh i guess uh yeah maybe smoother as they go i don't know the first it's like when you first take the trade it's very oh, it's gonna work let's see let's see and then yeah you just gotta get them off and running and then you can like all right winds that are back a yeah. little bit you know nice. so it was like that with uh with sleeping at night you know yeah like come on man like just go to fucking sleep like i know you're gonna get there let's let's just go 
but uh <laughs> but now it's easy you know now he's you know he's sleeps like a rock That's... but yeah, all these things. But. So before we hopped on, I was like, you know, we gotta we gotta start recording because we started talking about the difference between trend following, actually trading. You know, just think about it actually trading compared to talking about it. You know, yeah. I always say like it's easy to say like, hey, like you know, at the beginning of this year, I got a signal to get long the Nasdaq at mm-hmm. some point. And it's Mm. also, but it's, you know, there's trades in the middle of that, but it's easy to just say the NASDAQ will be up at the end of this year, but how do you trade that? How do you risk manage that? You know, do you get in and out of the trade? Like that's the important things. The thing isn't just being in the trade and being like, it'll go up forever. Um, So as a trader, we have to think two different ways. So you were talking earlier about just in general of, you know, people who have to write these wild things, you know, just to kind of sell trading you know and then you guys kind of are just like we're trend followers you know this is what we're doing this is how we do it yeah uh it's it's you know like similar to sports it you know it's easier to be on espn talking about the game than actually going in the game and it's it's um it's two completely different skills and two It's hard. It's hard to, I'd, I'd say, be in the game and then also talk about the game. I think like mm-hmm. like when I watch sports and I watch athletes, um, they're probably the most emotional after the game when, you know, they're they're their place of calm. And I remember from my my days is where you're not thinking, you are like at peace and it's on the field and um but but then going off and then and then talking about the game later uh at least for an athlete's perspective like right after the game right after a loss or whatever you're like most emotional you're like not making sense or you know you're 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 not good with words because you spend most of the time not talking you're you're playing yeah. and you're yeah. you know you're not you're not talking out on the ice to, or on yeah you know, it's like hockey or on the ice or on the field you know whatever but um but I think when, when you get into um, – well, one, I think people, like, take trend following almost for granted. Like, oh, it's easy. You just, you just go with the trend. You just buy <laughs> high. And, you know, like, when it makes a new high, you get in. Like, yeah. okay. You know, because <laughs> what happens around those times that you're, the system tells you to get in, mm-hmm. there are lots of stories yeah. And opinions and your own emotions and your own and your own opinions and feelings floating around. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I'm gonna get long the fucking Nasdaq now. Like, oh I don't know. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. You know, and then yep. you know, you don't do it or you switch something around, you go a little later than you should. Mm-hmm. And then you know, these things are these things happen all the time and they're just not talked about, they're not out front and center because no one really knows what you're doing you know um, your investors trust you um if you're you know writing a newsletter or something you know posting like, signals or something to do like mm-hmm. um you know no one really knows what the rules are these kind of signals just pop out and mm-hmm. they don't know if you change something or whatever but um i think as we've gotten more and more trend followers into the mix, let's say trend following funds and competitors, if you will, into the mix, they're not really true trend followers. They're, they just see it as an angle to sell something, to sell yes. a fund to, you know, raise some money. Mm-hmm. And it might be fashionable lately mm-hmm. uh, because, you know, it's done, you know, by and large done well, no matter if you're more it's been commodities the heavy or equities. for a few years, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, I guess since like 2020, mm-hmm. you know, things have uh, gotten a little wacky. And especially because, you know, people, I think, were looking at um, other things to invest in as the you know, Silicon Valley kind of startup culture kind of took a dip. And then the crypto kind of cooled off. And, um, yeah, those SPACs and like, you know, these like just, just speculative bubbles that were going around that were going on kind of went away or took a huge hit so so you know things are you know people naturally they're looking looking for what's working lately of course Mm -hmm. that's what they do 
and um, you know, stocks, you know, the index funds and bonds, you know, they were getting hammered too, at least last year. Yeah. And so I think as more and more of, you know, uh, at least lately trend following has become popular, uh, cool again, um, you're getting, you see some people in the, in the field that are, yeah, they're not really trend followers. They're, they're just, they're trend followers for, for now. You know, mm-hmm. they're, they're just salespeople. They're, they come and go. We just get an, we're just getting the latest round of people here. And, you know, trend following is not a, it can't be fashionable for you. Like it has to be. And um, I think I made the comment before we started hitting record. Like it's, it's punk rock, man. Like mm-hmm. you don't casually listen to it for a while. You know, yeah. it like it has to hit you or it does not. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I think you have your genre that mm-hmm. that is your that is your favorite and that you listen to all the time or or you don't. It is not a yeah, pick it up when it's good. I pick it up when it's you know whatever. Like, no. Um, and I think that's what happens when you get a lot of people just, you know, they're not investors technically, but they're just they're. they're exhibiting the same behavior as an investor where they're just chasing it some yeah. people chase it to invest other people chase it to start a business around and then they'll you know try to you know raise some money and you know uh go that angle go on the other side of the table if you will but i think um i think you you see over time like who really loves it who's in it you know you mentioned uh you know jerry working with jerry for yeah. a while you know we're, we're good good friends and you know we work together invest in each other's funds and you know we're we're, we're trend traders no matter what you know like mm-hmm. i started life. in a really lifers. crappy time sorry oh. i said you guys are lifers lifers yeah mm-hmm. you know there's a there's a bunch of other firms that that have been around a long long time and you know you can see like which ones change some things which ones mm-hmm. like st- they start talking too much and they mm-hmm. and they, le- they let their hand show and they're like oh they're not real i mean mm. sure okay they're yes they're trend following they're a trend following fun but like they'll take it out if they if they if they see a business angle mm. that that um would improve their business by taking it out or switching it around or you know massaging it or whatever because of and sales yeah they think of sales and and sales you, they, i think the thing that's awesome about you and you're like me in the sense like i i don't think about it as in like i ever want to raise money i never think about raising money i always think about doing well winning doing good trades like that's i think the what separates a lot of people is that these people here are their sales people they want to make a big business they want to bring as much money as as they can as possible but then there's the other people who are like, I just want to fucking win. Like, and I get that probably from sports as well. Like I, I was an athlete yeah. as well. Like you just kind of, your goal is to do well and win, not to make everybody like you, not to raise money. Like you don't give a shit about any of that stuff. It's, it's like you said, it's yeah. punk rock. Like whether we're playing in a, yeah. Whether I'm playing in front of five people or 5,000, 50,000 people, it doesn't matter. You're, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not here for that. Like, sure. Um, I want to win so you can all like have a great time, but, uh, it's a personal, it's a personal drive, a personal pride that I have to have. Like, you know, if we're playing stickball, like no one's there. It's like, Mike, this game doesn't mean anything. It's like, you don't fucking get it. Like, yeah, I can't explain it to you, but you don't understand, yeah. you know? This isn't important. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, you I know. have a problem. I go. I go. I have a park right down yeah. the street. I play basketball with them, and then like you know, if I get beat by like a, a kid in high school, I get so bent out of shape. You know, like I, I it's I'm I'm forty. Like I know, like I'm not as yeah. fast as the, you know these kids. There's a kid going to D one right now, and he fucking fried me the other day, and I got so upset about it. You know, and it's like, of course he did. Like I'm getting old. Like you, you don't play like you used to. But I can't get my head around that. You know, like it's still in me to be like, I want to win. I want to do well, but that transfers. I think that's, what's cool about trading is like that same athletic thing that you had then can transfer now into trading. Um, and it makes you really good at it. Yeah. I think, I think on a deeper, what you said before we, you said, uh, I don't care about raising money. Mm-hmm. So I think it's, it, that's another tell for me 
like or or maybe I, mean, I think it's a tell but i don't i don't think of i don't think of like i'm in a business i need you know i'm in the fund management business i need to raise money to improve my personal situation mm. like i think when you start thinking of pe- like it, they're just people they're people like you that want to do well mm-hmm. like I'm not thinking of like, oh, I got to raise some money um, from Jason or mm-hmm. I got to raise some money, you know, and get get their money. I got to get that mm-hmm. account. Like, I'm not looking to get or like raise. I'm like, I'm looking to do well. I'm, work, I'm looking to work well with people that I like who have a yes. similar common mind, common approach, common philosophy towards things, mm-hmm. risk tolerance, all that. And Hey, if we kid it off and work well together, that's wonderful. Like mm-hmm. we're all going to win and we're going to win with like at a calm state and low stress. Mm-hmm. And sure. We're going to like lose money at times. Or, like that's, mm-hmm. that's life. That's the markets. But, yeah. um, but like this, this thing of, yeah, we gotta, we gotta get assets. We gotta, we gotta get to a hundred million, like mm-hmm. get to a hundred million. That's like, I got to sleep with a hundred chicks. Like yeah. it's not like, it's, <laughs> you know, it's this true. is like kind of gross. It's yeah. just, you know, it doesn't mean it's not meaningful to me. Like it's no. not, you know, okay, great. You got to a hundred million. Like, I, you know, like what, like, what, what did, what did you want it for? You know, yeah. to, to buy the thing, to show off the, the month. Like, I don't, I don't know. Um, and maybe this is like my naive, you know, I don't get it. Like there's definitely like, no, you gotta be a shark in this business. You, you gotta like, you know, a, a man will, you know, doesn't think of it like that. Like they go and get it. Like, look, <laughs> I, I, I understand what you're saying. I'm just like, this doesn't, mm-hmm. this doesn't, when you start to think of the people who give you their hard earned money and trust mm-hmm. you with their hard earned money. I don't think of them as like assets or something. Mm-hmm. I don't think of them as like my, the, like the money or, or, you know, as like a path to my my goal or whatever it's just like no no i'm just like we're working together we're trying to win together like, yeah partners that, you know that that's it it's like yeah. yeah we're and like i we're on a texting basis where i, I can call mm-hmm. them anytime you can call mm-hmm. me anytime mm-hmm. this is not some business only cold transactional thing and i understand some people like are are better maybe better suited for for that um mm-hmm. But maybe I'm not like like again. Maybe I'm destined to like be a punk rock kid forever, and um, which I like. I listen to punk rock. That's not mm-hmm. like I'm not just using it as a thing. So me too. Maybe I'm yeah. like I'm just destined to not have this massive business. I'm I'm destined to like run this little restaurant that just tries to kick ass and like has a really tight group of local people, and then like oh, in thirty years we're kicking ass. And, like mm-hmm. oh, everyone's wealthy like yeah because we we just kept our head down and like just focused on making the food good yeah um and and rather than like we gotta expand yeah we gotta expand we gotta get more this we gotta like always like the money is the drive like that's no um no that's perfect yeah but i think a lot of people are are in that that uh, it it is their motivation and not saying you can't do well if that is your motivation yeah but um I don't know. Like, I prefer the other way. I just prefer, it's just not like, me. You know, it's like you yeah, said. Yeah. Like, it's just it's just not you. It's just not me. Like, I I think about trading as the thing that like I aspire to do well. Like, I work really hard to do well at it. I want to figure it out, especially like as a trend follower. Like, those things are really important to me. I I don't think that during the you know the dead. I I also know that when people are sitting there panicking and going like, Oh shit, you know, like this isn't working right now. I'm not one to just jump ship and go, Oh, I better find what's working. I know my style. I know my methodology. I know my brain. I know my brain doesn't like the other styles. doesn't work as well. Like for trend following, it fits me. If it's my style, it makes me not look, stare at a screen all fucking day. I can't do that. Um, I can't just pick stocks and walk away for 20 years. It's not anything I can even wrap my head around why that would work. Um, but trend following, it all makes sense to me. I can back test it. I'm analytical in itself and Mm -hmm. that works well for me. And like, yeah, like you said, there's the people who go, 
I do. I want to make all this money. I want to make all the money in the world. Um, it's not. Yeah. It's not not needed for everybody. You know. Yeah, I also think like there's a calm and there's a there's stability in knowing what your method is, what your sound is. It's to stick with the you know the music um, analogy, like you got you know jumping all around to go with with um, you know fashionable in the day. It's like ah, they're kind of like losing their like their lane is this, and not to say you have to like repeat the same album over and over again where it's just a copy you know Wait, version. i got i got a good one for you afi yeah. afi okay yeah, afi yeah. their beginnings yeah. were you know extremely punk rock you know they were pretty amazing and you found there it was the first cd called very fond of you or something i can't remember uh but the first cd they had was awesome you know um i remember owning it and being like this is great and then like the next cd they put out was like emo or something you know it's kind of like emo screamo ish and then like they just moved completely to this pop like thing then you were like this band sucks now like what happened and so like that's yeah. what i see a lot yeah uh yeah and i think like there's some there's some very proud of that you can, that's what it was the really can really do it well um who can really adapt but like still make good music too where it's like oh all right, i see what they're doing but like some some are like all right you're just leaning into the sound of the day and like you you tried to force this in and it didn't really it just didn't hit you know like you kind of went a little quick you know got a little lazy and just and just copied you know this isn't really you guys you know um i think uh uh you know they just put out a new album uh blink 182 just put out a new album after mm -hmm. a long you know that long breakup um but you could tell like it sounds different mm -hmm. um because you know like at least at least the you know tom tom DeLong's voice is getting it's getting a little deeper now yeah. he's not as like whiny as he used to be because you know he's singing for 30 years or whatever but uh you know but still like they're just like run and gun fast and you know a little catchy but they still they still do it like well, but it doesn't sound like you don't turn it on and think like, oh, this could have been on, you know, um, this could have been on the album, you know, 30 years, 20 years ago or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So like they're adapting, but they're still like maintaining their, their bread and butter, their, their broad strokes, if you will. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think, uh, you know, trend following is just, it's just, it's a specific taste and mm -hmm. a specific way. And you, you, you can't be a trend follower then become like a fundamental guy. Like the, mm -hmm. how the hell do you reconcile that? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, but and, you can go the other way because you see a lot of them go the other way. Oh well, yeah. Cause it, cause it works better because yeah. the, the fundamental guys get <laughs> fucking burned, you know, cause they stick with their story. Yeah. They stick with a good, a good company. Mm -hmm. And then, it turns out that good company wasn't a good company, but the 70% down trend happened. And then you're like, Oh yeah, now it's not a good company. Oh, now, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's part of the, uh, the risk of, uh, you know, equating uh, the company with the stock. A company is not the stock, you know, even if it's a good one, I think uh, like Tesla is probably a good example. Like there's mm -hmm. so many good examples, but Tesla, you know, hasn't gone anywhere in a long time. Mm -hmm. But over that span, their um, the revenues have jumped like 10x. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, well, because the market priced it in. Like back then, that was the move. Yes. You got the revenue expansion move then, not now. Not when it actually happens. You know, so like again, like you guys got to grow up. You know, this yeah. is what happens. You know, so I it's think, the like, truth. That's the that what you just said there is so spot on you know that's the truth where you as a trend follower i know like my price signals will tell me what's the what's going to happen you know like it's not telling me what, like you said earlier about the nasdaq you know like when you get the signal for the trade you're like really the nasdaq yeah. in this environment yeah. like yeah. you still take the trade like you take it like you put it on all right whatever and then like you know you got you know news coming out friends going why the world are you long the nasdaq you know like <laughs> you know just on and on but like it just kept going up so who gives yeah. a shit like it doesn't matter to me 
that's what's really tough to like really go it alone and shut it off and and be able to hear the noise because likely you're you're Mm. gonna hear things Mm. like you're in the business Mm. and you're gonna you know read things and talk to people and they're gonna be mentioning stuff and you're gonna your thoughts are gonna go so it's Mm -hmm. you know i played baseball so you had a lot of time to sink sit around and think Mm-hmm. And you like talk yourself into a slump. Like you talk yep. yourself into a, a shitty habit mm-hmm. just because you had some time to like kind of overthink why maybe you haven't, you know, hit the ball as well, like mm-hmm. in the last few games. Yep. And then those few games turn into 10 games just because you're like in your head and you make it worse. But like that, that is again, like another foundational, like, um, uh, advantage that having a, a, a specific set of rules like no matter how you're feeling like oh i know I, what i gotta do is like do this rules like that is my saving if i'm in a if i'm in traffic if my god forbid someone close to me dies and i'm a i'm a emotional wreck or i haven't read anything on the market i don't even know what's happening mm-hmm. um that gets me in and out uh with you know adapting with the market it's like all the time no matter what that that mm-hmm that is that is the gold standard but um but yeah people you know just can't help themselves like they just they want to know what's going on and then they're like oh, you know that move shouldn't be happening this is this doesn't make any sense you yeah. know like those things and then you're you know you're smart and you want to figure it all out and that's what drives me nuts yeah. that drives yeah. me crazy when people say things like you know this that this shouldn't happen this this can't be happening or it can't go up any more than this it's like people like the semiconductor trade you know people have told me that the whole damn time like still like it's at new highs again like it's still like why is this going up it should be cut in half by 50 percent. i don't know why and to me i say the same thing every time which is one one my stop will hit great two we're into profit so it gives a shit uh three is it's just a signal. It's one position. So I think the other thing is that you do well as a trend following trader, which is figure out like your positions don't matter that much to you because to get to the stop is just, you know, a certain percent of your portfolio. So how do you set that up? Like what's, how do you set up all your sizing, especially as a fund? Uh, how do I set up my sizing? So, uh, you know, first to start with, you know, what I want to, well, really hold on. Yeah. Start with what I'm willing to lose, like how much risk I'm willing to take on. Um, and then, and then I could see, you know, depending on how much, uh, money I'm managing, how many positions can I take? How diversified do I want to be? I tend to skew on the, I want to be as diversified as possible. It, diversified in the sense that because because the equity guys and most traditional investors will think of that as like okay i'm gonna have all of these on all the time that i'm very diversified like no i want to be how many things do i want to watch for opportunities to happen um and then when when the trends uh you know start to fire up then i can you know throw a position on there and Mm -hmm. so i always skewed on i wanted to be as as diversified as possible so so depending on you know that that calculus of uh uh assets managed how much risk i'm willing to take how diversified i want i want to be then that kind of sets the the risk for trade if you will um and over the recent years like when i first started out i was trading i could you know i was only trading three hundred thousand dollars my first day in 2011 so I was trading, I can only trade 11 markets. And that's the other, that's the other part of the, uh, of the equation too, is how long-term mm. and short-term you want to be. Um, I've always wanted to be as long-term as possible without, you know, being too long-term where it's doesn't work. Um, but that yet. Yeah, so thinking about, uh, think about that as well. I was trading 11 markets, say, you know, average holding period was like a a few months. And, uh, I remember I was risking almost 5% per trade. Now that 5% per trade on 11 markets versus say, uh, 
if you're trading 55 markets at 1% is the same overall risk, right? 55%. But with the 55 markets, you tend to maybe get, you know, depending on which ones you choose and the timing and all the, all those random things that you can't, can't control. Um, you, it, it produces, it's, it's a different system. You know, you're, you're much, you're much less, uh, susceptible to say, like, if you picked a market and there was a huge gap move overnight or something, you get crushed, you know, or the other end where, you know, say you have a 5% bet on an orange juice or cocoa right now, like you, your performance looks a lot different. Um, and that's where, um, you know, those things are just the nature of how you set up your design. But um, uh, so like now I'm trading like, you know, a, around 150 different instruments between futures and forex and, and single stocks so you know uh and i trade higher than 55 percent now because uh i got a lot more diversified a lot more long term a lot more stable uh, those early days where the system wasn't as i don't think as good because i was only again watching 11 markets like i didn't have carbon emissions i didn't have you know london metals i didn't you know the, and a bunch of other like single stocks. I was just trading index futures. So mm -hmm. um, whether I was trading the S and P, you know, Europe or Asia, they're all kind of over time. They do similar things. Um, it's not, you know, it's not a guarantee, but we tend to go through those periods where they're they're they're, they're doing kind of the same thing. You pull up the charts, yep. they're yeah, look kind of the same. But yep. um, so I wanted to get as different as possible without like double dipping on things. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah. Um, and I'm sure I can add more now, but again, it's like a function. I'm managing 10 million now. Like I, mm -hmm. I can't, I'm, I'm at a point now where I, I'm at risk of not being able to take positions in something. So like, all right, well, I got to lean back, you know, mm -hmm. like wait until it, wait until I, um, um, you know, manage some more money, uh, uh, hook up, you know, find to, uh, uh, some new investors before I can start doing those things. But those are like natural progressions that, uh, that exist as you grow and what yeah. decisions you, you want to make and things like that. Like I would not be as, as great as it would be right now, having a, say a 5% uh, bet on an orange juice. <laughs> it might be hard for a lot of people to hold on to it. Yes. Even as it wins, because you're looking at the dollars and you're like, holy shit. Uh, yeah. I have a hundred fucking contracts on, and this thing is just going to the moon. Like, oh, I can't, I can't it's stomach. A, yeah, I can't stomach a potential reversal. And I think like last week or two weeks ago, it felt like ten oh, percent in two days. Yeah, and <laughs> so, like I remember watching it, and being like looking in the portfolio and going like, damn. And like somebody said something to me about it. Oh man, it's a cool trade. I'm like, well, it's really not like moving the whole portfolio like yes it's a cool it's one cool trade in the portfolio but it's not moving everything around and that 10 percent right. drop like if it was like you said the size it would be uh, and that's the thing like i wanted to talk about that more because so many people talk about like the ability to hang on to these trades or like they'll be like oh man you can really hang on to these trades it's like i'm not i'm only able to do that because of the size if i had the yeah, yeah, size i, I wouldn't yeah. be able to do it yeah i think that is an advantage um to diversifying it's a, a, a advantage to like you know it might be your approach too but the mm -hmm. the approach of let's try to squeeze in as many different instruments as possible and get the smallest trade possible mm -hmm. um so i'm not so i am indifferent you know mm -hmm. so i'm not i'm not i'm not how I'll have my whole portfolio sitting there but i'm really looking at orange juice like oh god this thing is this thing's driving the whole p l mm -hmm. um I don't think that's healthy. Um, and again, people will skew to, well, if it's winning, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, trade long enough, it's not going to work out. You know, you're going to go through a period where it's going to drive you insane. And yeah. um, it's well, going to burn also you. The times where something like that, and I can't tell you how many times it's happened, something like that when I would trade a little bit bigger back in the day would be holding up the whole portfolio, you know, like basically let's say everything's kind of flat. And you have this one or even down and you have this one thing just ripping and then it drops 10 percent. you know like it becomes this huge position now you're losing majorly and like yeah. now you're thinking oh what do i gotta do now to like fix this like you know it just 
it's a it's a circle like you just continue in this loop of sh like a doom loop basically over and over again doing the wrong thing over and over again and being too big and stressing out and stress like like you talked about in baseball you know you can talk yourself into a slump like you can you yeah. can also try to talk yourself into like maybe if i did this differently maybe if i did this differently but if you just come in with the exact plan and that's the one thing i try to teach here more than anything is like if you come in with the right plan and you continue to just do the right thing over and over again, and you back test this, and you know this thing works, at some point, yeah. it will work again. Like, it's not something where, I mean, you talk to trend followers who've been doing this forever, and you probably have more than even me. Um, how many times do they even have to change their system, you know? I mean, and it's, I don't think you need to change. Like, if you do change, that's that's a, a personal preference of yours to, yeah, I, want, I don't want to trade as heavy over mm -hmm. here you know what i want to get a little longer term i want to add a new i want to add a new system that trades a different uh mm, you know i don't know a, a different breakout parameter mm -hmm. or something i don't know um and i think uh i think i forget where i was going with that um I lost my train of thought that's okay. I mean, it happens to me like 50 times a day. Yeah. Um, what was the, what was the question you said? What did you say right before? Just so I can remember. Um, I was just talking about uh, needing to change systems. Like how many traders do you know that have to change their systems? Yeah. So I think, I think when you, when you back test, you know, to get that initial, all right, I got something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then changing like how I changed, like when I changed, my, my plan was always to change. I just, I just wasn't able to yet, you know, going from 11 markets to now 150, like, okay, when do you add them? When do you do it? Like, well, that's technically a change, you know, um, you know, you don't need to change, but as long as you're kind of, you know, you know, just like a, you know, I think of it like a hitter or, you know, a baseball or like, you know, I'm going to use a, I use a different bat or I'm going to go one ounce heavier, lighter, whatever. I'm going to use different gloves or this mm -hmm. or that. These are all like kind of details. You're still going to maintain the same swing and things like that. You're not changing. You're not doing like a ground up change. Um, you just change it maybe some particulars like, oh, I like how that feels better. Or, you know, I really prefer that more. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. No big deal. But I think a lot of back tests, uh, really simulate w life in the markets well mm. other than the feelings that you're going to get when you have to do it <laughs> you yeah know? you know i think the i think the tests show and i've tested a lot of different things and i just like i blindly do i blindly select i put the i pick things out of a hat and and throw it in there same with mm. uh instruments um you know, uh, parameters and bet sizes and this mm -hmm. and things like that. And then, all right, let's, let's just see what happens. And a lot of things just work really well. And like, mm -hmm. it, it depends if you have, Oh, I have, uh, I give a higher percentage of the overall risk budget to equities or commodities mm -hmm. or whatever. It's like, well, you know, a couple of years ago, I think it was, um, yeah, 2021, I did really well. And, but some of the larger trend followers that trade a lot of financials did it, you know, mm -hmm. and some even lost money that year. That's like, mm -hmm. how the hell is that possible? Well, because a lot of them trade bonds. A lot of them trade stocks where they, 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 they got hurt or they just, they just muddled along, didn't do much. I mean, commodities are all, or... Yeah, I think, well, 21, I did well because a lot of commodities did really well. So that a lot year, of these stocks kind of everything went up twenty one smoothly, kind of. But individual yeah. stocks didn't do too good. Twenty two was the commodities did really good at the beginning of the year, and then right, stocks, then they topped. Stocks right. went bad. Right. So I didn't. I didn't. I overperformed huge in twenty one, and then underperformed, uh, in twenty two. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I expect that because yeah, I tend to. I, I give more of an allocation to, you know, more the real, more of the risk budget to commodities than say some other firms. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
at the end of 21, after I had a good year and they didn't, like, am I better? Am I a better trend follower? No, probably, maybe, maybe not. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll see over a long period of time. But like you answering that question with the last year's performance is not not a sufficient answer. Yes. Um, you know, it's like, well, I just had more commodities in there and you didn't, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and then you had more bonds or something where you shorted, you know, you had more of the bond short than I did. Well, I was mm-hmm. getting money. I was getting gains back in commodities getting out and you were loaded in bond short. Mm-hmm. I had the bond short too, but it wasn't as big as you. Oh, okay. Well then you made a lot more. Like, yeah. does that make you better than me now? Like, I don't know, you know? So I think, um, I think there's just so many things that work and you don't need to be tinkering all the time. And I think you got to be careful with, you know, what are your motivations behind it? Is it to maintain your asset base? You know, like, like, again, like if I'm managing your money, like the best thing to do is to do what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. And if I find truly find something better, like, Oh yeah. Trading 11 markets is actually not as good as trading 150. Yeah, I agree with that uh, based on all the testing and research I've done. Okay, yeah, I, I agree with that. All right, Jason, we're going to make that change. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. You know, but just be ready for possibly there might be some like, you know, clumsy period where we we get into these new positions and, you know, it, it might be where like the, the old 11 market system would have did well, did better than this new one. But longer term, this one is the one. This one's going to be better than that one long term. But in the short term, eh, you know, we might, we might, we might, yeah, mm-hmm. it might not work out that way, but it might be a little, you know, uh, performance might be a little more sluggish than it, than it would have been, but, but we got to make this change, um, you know, so this is what we're going to do, but it's like, no, we're going to be an aggressive fund. Then we're going to scale it back, but yeah, actually this is better. We're going to go back to this. It's like, you know. Yeah, you're always chasing the most recent performance, and you're getting yourself in trouble. And you're like, man, if we just would have stuck with the fucking thing, then wow, look what we would have done. But so like you said earlier, didn't... sticking with it for thirty years, you know, like if you're, because to me, that's what I'm thinking about with my money. I'm not thinking about, hey, I need it tomorrow. Like I'm thinking about, hey, the money right. I put into my own fund in twenty, thirty years when I would like to use it that's what I'm really looking for. How's my returns over that long period of time? My clients, they're really in it for the long run. So as long as like we're all in it for the long run, why am I sitting there focused on month to month and day to day and you know quarter to quarter? I should be focused on that long term, putting in good yearly returns like and then compounding that together over a long period of time. Now we have a ton of money. So if you're able to outperform the market in that very long run now we're talking about a real recipe to make a lot of money but if you're sitting there and you're going like i need to outperform every day every week like one you're going to start blowing yourself up because it's impossible you're chasing something that's impossible you can't win every day and every week so what we do as trend followers we take that we go very long term we understand that there's going to be some down periods because the market isn't always in the environment that's best for us so just understanding that now we're looking yeah. towards when when are we going to be in those environments? Well, you know, 2020, 21, we get the best environments ever. We make up for all our underperformance at a certain point. You know, like it's it's very important to understand that difference. Yeah, I you know I think uh, if I I, I um, at my house we have like a little garden. There's no like vegetables or anything. It's just a lot of flowers, and I always like take that very seriously because it's like one of my calming you know uh non-competitive uh you know just habits i guess i don't know what you call it hobbies hobbies and um like go out and go day trade your garden like Mm -hmm. you'll end up killing it because Mm -hmm. you'll be wanting it to grow faster than it is it's not booming as well i gotta move it like Mm -hmm. now you're moving the whole plant like you keep cutting the roots and moving it and you're giving it, you're trying to, you're trying to mask it with all the new, um, you know, fertilizers or new soils or whatever. It's like, just leave it the fuck alone. Figure out where the sun is going to go, where the water is being displaced. If you have an irrigation, um, what does better in the sun? What does better in the shade? What does part, you know, yada, 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 and then put it around and then watch it. 
and then see. And don't prune it to death. That's another thing that people do. They'll prune it to death. You know, they, I don't want to see any any orange. I don't want to see any crappy color other than the bright green or the bright colors. But then you cut it too much and you, you kill the plant. You know, yep. like you, you can't keep cutting it. You got to just leave it alone. The plant will handle it. If you were not here, it would be just fine. <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, I think it's it's like that with trading as well. It, uh, uh, you get a good way. Just leave it. Leave it be. We don't we don't know how exactly this is going to work out, but you have to trust in the fact that trends. It's the only I guess the only prediction we make is trend followers that trends will continue happening, mm-hmm. and and then we'll be able to capture them at some point but i don't i don't know if we're how we're gonna do well uh how we're gonna do this month you know like this month like it sounds so like ridiculous you know yeah but but again like what are you doing you're just sitting around thinking about this month you know mm-hmm. you're thinking about oh my competitors are doing well i gotta i gotta i gotta be better than them i gotta stay stay close by you know i'm not doing as well i, or I gotta make something happen and you know it, it you just get yourself in a bad spot if you let if you go like that meanwhile like punk rock is like we have no aspirations we're not even thinking about like playing in grand you know yeah stadiums all these people we're just like fucking jamming in our garage bro Mm -hmm. and like trying to make good music and like if it works out wonderful you know just wonderful and you know sports guys have the same thing where they're just like trying to play well they play in a small town and wherever um and they put their head down, they play well, put out a good product, mm-hmm. and oh, magically it works out. Of course, yeah. you know, of course, of course, yeah. of course it does. You don't need to have like this grand like business plan and scheme. You know, you just make a good thing, mm-hmm. play well. You know, make a good, make good food, and people are gonna eventually find you. Some will find you faster than others. Um, some people get lucky. Mm-hmm. Uh, luckier than others you know they have success earlier but in the long run you all kind of you're doing you're, you're making a good product you'll you, you're gonna win you're gonna win but, yeah your garden analogy is awesome because i i garden as well i mainly mainly have like a i have a bunch of bee stuff i love bees so i have a bunch bees, of bees yeah, to, okay. yeah so i'm all, i have like a bunch of little bee houses and and uh i keep bees and i raise like leaf cutter bees and mason bees and stuff so but thinking about that and the analogy that you gave, like it really made me think about a lot of new traders. A lot of new traders watch this and like, you know, they'll go to a newsletter and be like, oh, this person is doing this. And like, they're saying their returns are this. Oh, I'm on Twitter. This guy said he had a, you know, 190% trade today. I didn't have 190% trade today. And it's like some option, some one day options trade that like, you know, happens one in a million times, you know, like, and he posted it, who knows what the rest of his positions look like, or what his year looks like, you know, like, and they're getting obsessed with it. They're going, Oh, that's like this, they're getting obsessed with it. So, you know, when you have that type of situation, you're looking at it and going, okay, well, I'm a new trader, I have to change all this stuff around, I have to read this person, I have to keep up with this person, I have to do this, like, you're driving yourself fucking crazy. Like yeah. literally, you're driving yourself fucking crazy. You will not be a good trader like that. You have to figure out, and that's what I really try to do is like, here's here's what I do. See my discipline, see what I do with my strategy, but create your own. Like I, I can't tell you, like I'm just telling you what I'm doing. I'm not telling you what to do. You got to figure that out on your own and mix that with your own methodology and back test that and figure out what type of trader you want to be. Because if you're sitting over here, rearranging the garden every day like it's dead right yeah that's it. sometimes it's just best to leave it alone like trust like do a lot of work uh beforehand again like get it all right and uh, i learned that from gardening too like i had things in the wrong spots you know there's no amount of fertilizer or whatever that you can do uh to get it to grow what it needs is something out of your control so um you know you can't you can't replicate the sun or um or something like that maybe being next to another plant like it's well yeah it, this these roots aren't as strong as these other ones you got around it and they're stealing all the water you know get it into a, a different spot like okay done 
you know, it's not, don't try to keep trying to make it work um, in this obvious, obviously, uh, you know, bad spot that it's in or something. But uh, nice. yeah, I think, uh, you know, but I don't think Penny, I think people rush into it. They rush into a lot of businesses and rush into a lot of just decisions and then they're left scrambling like oh i made a mistake well maybe let's just like let's not admit it let's just try to like keep masking it let's try to keep um you know finding a finding a way to fix it somehow like no the the move is to just cut it move on you know rather than create rules for rules for rules and then it's got a very complicated thing you don't know what it's doing anymore um Nice. But it's, these are all common. These are all things that people do that we all do. Yeah. Well, perfect. Well, let's uh, end on that note. I want to be mindful of your time. I've kept you for a while now, but thank you so much for coming on, man. And uh, we'll talk soon. Sounds good, man.